All right, everybody. This is the lecture you have been waiting for, derivatives. Uh, so we're going to start off uh, with part one out of uh, three parts, actually, but two back to back, and then we'll kind of come back to them later. Uh, we're going to start off with the limit definition of a derivative. We kind of saw this last time. We saw this idea of the limit as h approaches zero, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. We saw that before. We saw that that gave us the slope of the tangent line at a particular point. We, we used c in here for that point, but you could just generally say x. It's just any point x. So if I want the slope of a tangent line at a point x, this is the formula that I use. And that, that's what we call the derivative, that slope of the tangent line. We've got that definition just to recap here. The derivative of a function at a very particular point, it's, it is the slope of that tangent line. And that's given by that limit that we saw before. So going back through really quickly, um, just on how we got to that, we started with this idea of average rate of change. And so we, we started with a function that we, that we graphed and it looked like this. And we ended up doing a average rate of change between two points. What we did was we then took those points and we kind of mushed them together so that they're on the same exact point so that they're just the same thing. And at that point, we only have one point. So we can't do an average rate of change, but we can do what's called an instantaneous rate of change. And so you can have that right there. You can just mush them onto one point and you can do an instantaneous rate of change. And that red line that I just drew right here, that has a, that is the tangent line. It has a slope given by that formula I wrote on the first page. We call that the instantaneous rate of change. We call it the slope of the tangent line. We call it the derivative. Those are all equal names uh, for that. And that formula for that derivative is like I had written on that first slide. It's this limit. It's this limit and I'm gonna let H go to zero and that's gonna let those, those two points basically join together and become one. And then I have an instantaneous rate of change. Notationally, I didn't talk about this last time, but we, we have this notation here, f apostrophe of x. And so if I give you a function f of x, we use this notation with this apostrophe here to denote the derivative. And what we call this apostrophe, we call it a prime. So I'll say f prime of x, and that'll, and that'll be sort of our, our notation for the derivative. We're gonna use that notation a lot, so you'll, you'll get super comfortable with that, uh, and that'll be, that'll be good. So, We've got the derivative um, at, at any point, you know, if we, at any point X, this is our derivative right here. That's, that's all fine and dandy. We've got our formula and we can call it F prime of X. Now, if, if we wanted to just talk about it at a, at a very particular point, we, we would say that at that point X equals C, we're going to have F prime of C. And that's going to be us just taking C and plugging it in for X. And so um, if I asked you to find the derivative of a function at a very particular point, you would have to plug in C in, in there. I could just ask you though, to find the derivative of the function just in general. And when you do this limit, it won't be, it won't come out to a number like we saw last time. Because there's an X in here, it'll be in terms of X. And let's do an example so that you guys can see what I'm saying there by this sort of general derivative. So let's take a very simple function, X squared. And, and I'll, I'll want us to take the derivative of that. So I wanna find the slope of the tangent line of X squared. Now I'm not giving you a particular point. You know, you know I'm not saying something like find this at X equals three. I'm just doing this in general. So we're gonna keep everything in terms of X's and we're actually gonna see that our answer ends up being two X. And, and that's fine, that's, that's, you know, we've got our answer there. It's in terms of X's, um, we'll get to that, we'll do the work to get there. But I just wanna make it clear that our answer is gonna be in terms of X. So let's go ahead and, and, and work this out. The very first thing we gotta start off with is, is this derivative. We have our formula, F prime of X, 
is given by the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And I can substitute in here. Here's the easy part. I've got the h on the bottom. I've got minus f of x. We know that f of x is just x squared. So I've got you know this right here that I can, I'm just copying that right there. But then what can sometimes get confusing is this f of x plus h. And just remember that that x plus h is the input to f of x. So what I need to do, if I have an x plus h in there instead of an x, I need to take everywhere that I see an x in this function, I need to replace it with an x plus h. And so what that's going to look like, it's going to look like this right here, x plus h and all of that squared. That's very different from writing this. This is, this is incorrect here. We don't, we don't want to do that because that's just taking x squared and then just adding h. But what I've done here in the red, in, in these red dashed uh, boxes, is I'm actually just replacing x with x plus h. So be careful on that. Make sure you do that appropriately. Don't do this x squared plus h uh, deal. So. At this point, we're pretty much just doing algebra. We're just, we're just gonna expand this uh, red out. We're gonna foil that out and we'll see what we get. We'll see what happens. X squared plus two X H plus H squared minus X squared all over H. That's fantastic. I see some cancellation here. That's good, I like that. Let's go ahead and copy this over onto a new slide. Give ourselves some space. So we're continuing on, we've got F prime of X, that's still what we're calculating, that derivative. When I have that X squared cancellation, I end up with the limit as H approaches zero of two XH plus h squared, and that's all divided by h. Now, you can see that I can factor an h out. And then I get some more cancellation there. Let's go ahead and copy this guy onto another slide, and we'll keep going with our work. You can probably see what, what's gonna happen here. So we're here, still calculating f prime, slope of the tangent line, derivative. So we're gonna end up with the limit as h approaches zero of two x plus h. And I'll put that in parentheses just to make that really clear. Then I'm just gonna plug in, I'm gonna direct sub for h, not for x, but for h, gotta be careful there. And then I just get that two x that we talked about that, that I knew we were gonna get ahead of time. Um, and that's, that's our answer. So that is the derivative of x squared. It is 2x. You do this, all this limit work, and you end up with that 2x. And what I could ask you now is I could say, all right, now what's the derivative of f of x equals x squared at a particular point, right? So we found this in general. But let's say that I, that I had us find, so let's, let's sort of edit this right here. And let's say find this at x equals three. And so I wanna find the derivative at that point. Now, what you're totally welcome to do, you're totally welcome to start off with the definition of the derivative evaluated at three. And write this. This is what we saw last time. We saw it in the beginning of this lecture as well, where we had that C value, but C is now three in this case. You're totally welcome to write this out, plug everything in and do all the work. But what I'm gonna tell you right now before you jump in and do that, the work is going to look identical to this work right here. These three slides that I, that I did all this work on, Everywhere that you see an X here, we would really just be replacing it with three. And to me, that seems a little redundant. I've already done all this work, so let's use that to our advantage. So 
instead of doing it all this way, let's let's go ahead let's go ahead and do this. We already know what the derivative is. We've already calculated that. We wrote that f prime of x is equal to two x. So if I just if I just go on with this, I could say, hey, f prime of three is equal to two times three. That's me just treating this like any other function. Three is my input, and I'm plugging that into the function everywhere that I see an x. And I found my derivative, six, right there. If you went ahead and you did this limit, you would also get six, but we're gonna save ourselves some time, and we're gonna do that limit in general first, just with x's, so that we leave everything general. And then when I ask you to find that derivative at a particular point, you'll be able to just sort of plug and chug into that already found derivative, you know, in this case, 2x. And so that's going to be that, that idea of doing a derivative um, with, with, a, with this limit definition. So scrolling back here, we've got this limit definition of the derivative. So if I ask you, if I give you a function, I say, hey, find the derivative, just in general, find the derivative. You're going to evaluate this limit right here. And then your answer will be in terms of x. And then more likely than not, after that, I'll ask you, hey, tell me what the derivative is at a very particular point. And that's where you can just plug in c here. So that's what I'm saying here. You can take the derivative and then just plug in x equals c, whatever that point I've asked you for. And that's it on the limit definition of the derivative. Um, next time, we'll, we'll talk about um, some business applications and uh, as well as more on tangent lines and how to find those equations. And then we'll talk about this idea of differentiability as well. So stay tuned for all that and I'll see you on the next recording.